We are born with inherited differences, our genes if you will, the blueprints for all the components of the cells and tissues in the body, and then we have different experiences that are unique to individuals. These conspire to create diseases, and I think in many ways it's not surprising that they'll make us different when we undergo treatment, and that's the idea of personalized medicine, the right treatment at the right time for the right person. And personalized or individualized medicine is changing the whole way we practice all of healthcare across all diseases. But technology is going to be introduced much more quickly in cancer because cancers are diseases of defective genes, acquired defects in the genes. They have as many as 50 or 60 genetic changes, uh, 500 or more epigenome changes, and I think what we're going to see happen is the ability to look at all the gene sequences, have all the gene changes at our disposal to make clinical decisions. I think that'll come probably in the four to five year uh, time frame. And I think there will be a different style of interaction, uh, I suspect, between physician and the patient. Probably the patient will have at their disposal uh, all of their health records, their genome, their epigenome every vaccine shot pill encounter image that they've ever had and that is going to be a reasonable tax on our ability to get all this information together but we've quite literally led this revolution our basic researchers have been ones who've discovered many of these genomic and epigenomic differences in different cancers and different people with the same type of cancer but also uh, the real uh, competitive advantage of Johns Hopkins over many other places is that we have a school of engineering, departments of computer science and the like, that have the expertise to think about an information problem of this scope. And to really make it a reality, we're gonna fundamentally change how medicine is practiced.